Okay, let's say our expected frequencies. So here's our expected, okay? And uh, we have our age categories, 20 to 30. We have 30 to 40. We have 40 to 50, okay? Uh, and we have our phone categories, okay? Looks something like this. Let's say we have Vodafone, Vodafone. We have HTC and we have Apple, okay? And let's just continue on with our contingency table. Okay, let's call this row one. Let's call this row two. Row three is total. Let's call this column one's total, column two is total, and column three is total, okay? And this is the total number of observations, which is our sample size, okay? So let's consider this person in here, okay? What is the probability, okay, that the person selected is 20 to 30 years of age and okay and they use Vodafone okay well what we end up with it is if we assume independence okay if we assume independence it's the product of the individual probabilities okay so it's the probability that they're 20 to 30 okay times the probability that they use Vodafone or they have a Vodafone phone okay now the probability that they're 20 to 30 is well how many 20 to 30 year olds are there well there's or one amounts of them relative to the sample size n, okay? What about Vodafone? Well, what's the probability that the person selected is a Vodafone customer? Well, there we go. It's C1, that's how many people there is that use Vodafone, so it's C1 over n. So this is the proportion, or this is this is the probability, okay? The probability, okay? okay? Or the proportion, the proportion of values that we'd expect. Now, it's, what we really want to calculate is what's the expected. What's the expected, okay? Well, if they're independent, we'd expect this proportion, okay? And we'd expect that proportion of the total amount. So our expected observations, okay, our expected frequency, okay, would be equal to this probability, okay? It'd be the probability, okay, of, let's say, twiddle and, let's say, twiddle, twiddle, okay? Okay, which is this amount here, it'd be this proportion of the total number of observations, which is simply equal to, well, we know from independence that it's row one over n times C1 over n times n. And hopefully we can see what actually happens here is that these n's cancel here to give us, it's the row one total times the column one total okay, over the total amount. So actually, when I want to calculate an expected frequency, all I need to do is to take into consideration the row total and the column total relative to the total number of observations. So our expected frequencies, our expected frequencies, okay, our frequencies, f of e is simply equal to the, the row total, okay, times the column total, okay, relative to the total number, which is our sample size n. Okay, so now, that was just a little bit of the theory behind how we calculate our expected frequencies. So now, let's just go back. We have our observed frequencies here, and I want to calculate the expected frequencies. So let me do this again on another page, okay? Let me just reproduce our observed frequencies. So we have, we have the 20 to 30 year old categories, the 20 to 30, we have the 30 to 40, we have the 40 to 50, okay? Uh, we have the Vodafone, I'll just say VOD, we have the HTC, and we have the Apple category, let's say app, okay? Uh, and what we end up with is we're going to end up with something like this. Okay, so let's just keep in mind, we've already done this. So I have 20, 80, I have 40, oh, 40, uh, I have 15, I have 60, I have 65, I have 5, I have 50, and I have 30, okay? Gives me row totals of 140, 140, 85. Gives me column totals of 40, 190, 135. Gives us a total sample size of 360, 365, okay? So these are my observed frequencies. They're observed, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to calculate my expected frequency. So I'm going to reproduce, I'm going to create a new table because every cell is going to have an expected frequency associated with it. What we'd expect to happen if these two variables were actually independent of each other. So my expected frequencies are going to be 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, okay? And we're going to do this for VOD, HTC, Apple, okay? We're going to have our expected frequencies. 
they're going to look something like this okay so we know that our expected frequencies are the the row total times the column total divided by n okay so let's do this so my first expected frequency to go in here is the row total for this let's do the first one okay so this is the expected frequency okay for 20 to 30 years of age and vodafone okay so it's the row total well this is the one i'm doing here now so what row is this on well it's on this row here so it's 140 okay, times the column total is 40 okay over the sample size which is 365 so that gives us an expected frequency of 140 times 40 equals that divided by 365 gives us an expected frequency of we'd expect if these two variables were independent of each other we'd expect 15.34 observations to be in this cell so 15.34 let's do another one let's do this one here okay so in other words what's the expected frequency for the 40 to 50 year category and HTC well it's the row that's on the row total okay well the row that this 40 to 50s are on there here is 85 times the column total it's down the middle column so the column total is 190 relative to the sample size which is 365 okay so that gives us here and then that gives us when we do this that gives us 85 times 190 okay divided by 365 gives us an expected frequency of 44 44.25 rounded to two decimal places okay now I've already ran all the rest of the expected frequencies so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill them into two decimal places okay maybe I'll just fold this over here okay rather than calculating them all which is gonna take a little bit of time to do uh, I've already ran them yeah using Excel so what I get is I get uh, 72.88 I get 51.78, I get 15.34, I get 72.88, uh, I get 51.